Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to go over how to geotag photos and videos in Adobe Lightroom when your camera doesn't have GPS built into it. The great thing about this method is that it works regardless of what kind of camera you're using. In fact, even the first digital cameras from back in the 90s will work with this method. And even better, it's infinitely scalable and requires the same minimal amount of effort regardless of whether you're shooting with one camera or a thousand. Before we begin, let's just go over the equipment you're going to need for this tutorial. First, you need a camera. This is just an entry-level DSLR, no frills camera. It's got no GPS, doesn't do video, it just takes pictures. Second thing you're going to need is a handheld GPS, or you can use a smartphone with a tracking app on it uh, as well. It just needs to have something that can track the breadcrumbs as you move around on your photo shoot. So what are some of the advantages of geotagging photos using a handheld GPS? First off, you can buy GPS units that plug directly into a camera like this. The problem though is that they mount to the top of the camera. Which is fine if you're just doing still photography, but if you're someone like me who takes a lot of videos, what happens then when you want to mount, say, a microphone to the top of it? You can't. The other issue is the cost associated with the GPS units for the camera. Something that mounts on the top here and plugs into the camera, they generally run about two or three hundred dollars a piece, which if you're only outfitting one camera, it's not really a big deal, but if you've got multiple cameras, that cost can balloon pretty quickly. Before you head out on your photo shoot, there is one thing you absolutely must do, and that is to make sure that the clocks on your camera and your GPS are synced. Most GPS units nowadays are like cell phones and can set their own clock, so you want to set the clock on the camera to match the clock on the GPS. The geotag process is quite simple, and it works simply by matching the timestamps between your camera and the GPS track. Lightroom simply looks at when the picture was taken, goes into your GPS track, and extracts the latitude and longitude coordinates from the corresponding timestamp. But before we sync up our clocks though, let's talk a little bit about time zones. If you're only going to be shooting within one time zone, by all means sync the clocks to your local time zone. On the other hand though, perhaps you travel a lot and your travels bring you across multiple time zones. In the past, I've had more instances than I care to admit where I was off on a road trip photographing beautiful scenery when I crossed the time zone and didn't realize it. All of a sudden now, some of my pictures were an hour out of sync with the GPS. Then you have to go in after the fact and figure out which pictures were taken in which time zone. It's a major headache. Trust me, you don't want to do it. To avoid all these time zone issues, all you have to do is sync the clocks to Universal Coordinated Time or UTC. Also called Zulu Time, UTC is the modern standard the world uses to regulate time. From a purely hour and minute standpoint, UTC and Greenwich Mean Time are the exact same thing, but because the UTC is synced to the atomic clock, it's actually a little bit more accurate. If your camera or GPS does not list UTC in its selection of time zones, select London, making sure that daylight saving time is disabled. Alternatively, both Iceland and Dakar, the capital of Senegal, are on UTC year-round. So let's sync up these clocks now. If I go into my camera menu and go down to the time zone and the date here, you can see here, if I can get this right on the bottom there, you can see the timestamp says 1907. And if we go into the GPS here, you can see, let me get this going, that it also says 1907. So they're synced. Now that they're synced, let's head out in the field.
All right, that was a great photo shoot. But before we get to geotagging, let's take a second to talk about the GPX tracks that your GPS records and how to read those files and open them and the like. Before we get to importing anything into Lightroom, let's first look at those track files that are on your GPS. They're called GPX or GPS exchange files. They are just XML, they're open source, you don't need any kind of proprietary software to run them. So let's look at these ones that I've pulled into a GIS program. Uh, these are from a trip that I took recently to Grand Teton National Park and a road trip through Wyoming, which you can see in this red line here. So what exactly is inside of these GPX files? For that, we can look inside, just go to get info here. And when the box pops up, you get all these um, many, many points that are on the track. And so I'll pick one where I'm moving here. Uh, these were just off of the car GPS from this same road trip through Wyoming that we will use to geotag our photos. But it gives you a date time stamp here. That's how far you traveled in the leg, 112 meters. That's how long it took you to travel that leg, seven seconds. This is your speed on that leg, 57 kilometers per hour. The elevation above sea level, 2,253 meters. The compass direction you are traveling in, as well as the lat and long coordinates. And it's these lat and long coordinates are what you'll ultimately use to geotag your photos. Interestingly, one of the best pieces of software to actually view GPX files in is Adobe Lightroom itself. You don't need a fancy GIS program or even the Garmin software to do it. You can do it right from within Lightroom. So I've here have opened up an empty library in Lightroom. To, so to access the map, just click on the map tab up in the corner here, and it will just bring you a blank Google map. Now, to load the track file in, that GPX file we just offloaded from the GPS, simply go down to the track button, go to load track log, and select your track. So when the track first loads, you may notice this is not what we were looking at. This is not Grand Teton National Park. This is a tiny little stretch of a remote highway in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming. So why is there no track line to Grand Teton or anywhere else? And that's actually because the tracks in the GPX file get grouped. So you can select the track that you want from the list, or in our case, we'll just hit all tracks. And that will show you the same track that we were looking at in the GIS software as well as Garmin. And so this, you can see, runs right through Grand Teton. That's exactly what we want to GR tag our photos. Now that we have our track line in, let's add our photos. Um, we can just go up to import and we will import these. All right, now that we have the photos imported, let's just take a quick look at the metadata. This is just picking one at random. If we go over here and scroll down, you can see there's the timestamp there. That timestamp is UTC. And if we scroll all the way down to the location, you can see that there is no location at all embedded in this file. So let's go add some. All right, before we get to any kind of geotagging, there is one other th little minor thing with the timestamps on the photos versus the GPS tracks that may trip you up a little bit. If you look at the timestamp, which is right here, you'll notice that it's got the date and the time, but there's no time zone attached to it. It just has the timestamp with no time zone. However, if you go to the map here and look at the track, you can see that the, uh, the track does, I repeat, does have a time zone attached to it. And unfortunately, if you're using something other than your local time zone, your computer will actually convert these back to your local time zone when it imports them into Lightroom or GIS or whatever else you're using to view them. 
So before you sync them to the camera or the pictures, you actually have to convert these once again back to UTC. So if you go back to the track menu and just click set time zone offset, and there's a real easy way to remember this. This is the time zone of where you currently are. This is not the time zone that the pictures were taken in because as you can see from here, it's labeling these as Eastern time and Grand Teton is mountain time. So this, we're gonna sync it to Eastern time because that's where I am right now. And the secret to getting the number of hours to offset is just take the difference uh, from UTC to your local time zone, which for Eastern standard time, because this was back in February, Eastern standard time is UTC minus five so just take that minus five and reverse the sign to get plus five. So in here, we just enter five hours and hit okay. Now the time zones are synced back up to the photos and now it's time to geotag. All right, now that the time zones are all synced back up, it's finally time for what we came here for. It's time to geotag these photos. So to do that, you have to go back to the library and where you can see all the photos here. And if you're on a Mac, hit Command A to select them all. If you're on a PC, it's Control A. Don't have to push anything other than that. Just make sure they're all selected. Come on back to your map and go to your track menu and just hit Auto Tag. Uh, and it'll give you the number of photos you selected and just hit Auto Tag Selected Photos. You'll see the photos popped up on the, pop up on the screen. It, it may prompt you for this address lookup. And what that does is it just takes the lat long coordinates and looks up an address for those. And it's actually not a physical street address. It'll just give you city, state, and country. So we will enable those. So now you can see our photos have been added to the map here. If we zoom in on these, you can actually hover over any of these and it will show you, whoops, come back. It'll show you all of the pictures that are geotagged in this particular area. There's another one. And you can click through them. And then if you come back to the library, you'll just pick another one of these pretty much at random. If you go over to the metadata here now, you can see now that this is tagged with a location. It says Moose, Wyoming, United States. And if you go up, it now has the GPS coordinates as well as the altitude. And even though you can't see the west coordinate, it is actually there if you click on it. And that's all there is to it. Your photos are now geotagged. All right, that just about wraps up this lesson on geotagging photos using a handheld GPS. Because geotagging photos is such a critical part of the landscape and travel photographer's workflow, and with so many cameras still lacking built-in GPS, it's even more critical to know how to geotag photos using a handheld GPS and Adobe Lightroom. It's a method that's accurate, reliable, largely foolproof, and requires only one GPS, regardless of how many cameras you have. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below, and make sure to hit that subscribe button right there. That's all for now. We'll see you in the next one.